I feel like Moses, when Moses said, Lord, if you're not, if you're not going to go with us, I don't want to go. Show me your glory. You know, we pray about wanting to really step into the great things of God, and we pray about, and then all of a sudden we meet, we, 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 we hit these moments, you know, and uh, so let's go, let's do it, all right, so uh, musicians, if you could just stay where you're at, singers, or you can just kind of maybe sit where you're close. You don't need to go all the way back to your seat, but you can if you want, or you can sit down where you are right now. But I want to just follow what I'm feeling. <clears throat> and then we're going to, before the service is over, what we're going to do is, uh, or you can you can stand, you can sit, you can kneel, you can, you can sit here, just get comfortable. Uh, and singers, you don't have to stand the whole time. We're going to wear your feet out. So you can come sit down over here, get comfy. Just so if you want to sit down, you can. It's all right. But there you go. You can sit where you're at. You don't have to go all the way back to your seat. But <clears throat> musicians, stay where you're at. Um, <sighs> before the service is over, I just want to say it now so I don't forget. Before the service is over, at the end of this time. Those of you that <clears throat> need physical healing today, those of you that uh, came here with pain in your body, those of you that have serious illnesses and sicknesses, or maybe even have someone that you want to uh, stand in their stead for, uh, the la we're going to have you come and just stand here in the front, and we're going to pray for everyone today that needs uh, healing, everyone today that needs a miracle, everyone today that is uh, suffering with any kind of infirmity or pain in your body and we're going to begin to believe God for the supernatural today so that you don't walk out of here <clears throat> with that uh, this this morning we, we kind of addressed the fact that Joseph had a dream and uh, we talked about the elements of the things that were trying to oppose the dream and then we kind of ended around the concept of what awakened the dream, the dreamer again, and I and I kind of focused on this point that the dreamer had this gift in him, and for eleven years it wasn't it wasn't operating, and when he got into the presence of a dream, something stirred back up again. What seemed like was gone for eleven years, and so <clears throat> um, in that moment though if you'll notice he did something he never did before uh, when we meet him at 17 he's having dreams okay but when we see him at 28 he's interpreting dreams so what's interesting is he went to another he went to another level and now he's not just someone who had a dream for himself that spoke of greatness for himself 11, 11 years later he <clears throat> is interpreting dreams of others and he is he's able to operate in this gift on a whole do another level and 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 I talked about the fact that God is is wanting to unlock some things in the spirit for us here and for this church here and, and God wants us to step into the moving of the Spirit. You know, and, and, and as I said before, anytime you talk about the, the gifts of the Spirit in operation, there seems to be uh, people get a little uncomfortable. Um, and it just kind of seems like, hey, man, let's, we don't really need that. Let's just kind of focus on, you know, this and, and we're good. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you right now, as we move into these end times, we need to step We've got to ex walk in a dimension of the supernatural greater than ever before. Paul said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Now, if we want to start, 
If we want to start minimizing the gifts of the Spirit, Jesus, there was a conversion of an entire city because of one word of knowledge. To the woman at the well, he said, why don't you go get your, why don't you go get your husband? Uh, and she said, I don't have a husband. Yeah, you're right. You've had five, and the one that you're with is not your own. And she goes to, to the city, and what does she say? Come here, a man that told me everything I ever did. No, he didn't. But it felt like it for sure because that was the main thing. But that one word of knowledge, and then read the rest of the story. The Bible says the whole city came out and, and believed on him. And he was there for three days. One word of knowledge. One word of knowledge. And, and right now today, as the, the gifts of the Spirit being in operation could literally unlock something in the Spirit for someone, for a neighborhood, for a family, for a part of this city by just one person being healed of a particular sickness or a miracle taking place in someone's body. And so <clears throat> Joseph encounters a dream, and up to that point he had only had a dream, but now something unlocks in him that up to this point dreams had been gone for 11 years, and now he's operating on a level where he's interpreting someone else's dream. And not to, two years after that, he interprets the dream of the Pharaoh and becomes governor of the most powerful nation in the world at that time. And um, I believe God is going to cause the prophetic to rise again. And it, it's not going to be like the latter rain movement. It's not going to be like before where people are going to try to manipulate others and, 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 and operate in a, in a... God's not going to allow it. <clears throat> those, that, those that do try, they'll be in a minority, and they won't last long. But we need to see in the Spirit. I, I mentioned at the end of, of the last session that in Acts 2, they, they saw in the Spirit. What did they see? Cloven tongues like as a fire. And we preach about that, and we talk about that, and we talk about Acts 2, and them being filled with the Spirit, and we just skip right over the fact that they saw cloven tongues, uh, cloven tongues like as a fire, and we, and we kind of are okay with it because it's back then, and it's for them. And we're not cessationists, but somehow we're cessationists on some stuff. And those of you that don't know what a cessationist is, it's, it's those that believe that the, the operation of the supernatural has ceased, that it stopped with the apostles, that that's not for us today. And there's people that believe that. Well, you're, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, you're a little too late if that's what you believe. Because I've seen too much. It's like the one guy said, to one, like the one gentleman uh, who it, back in the early days of the 1900s, he, uh, <clears throat> the guy, somebody sent him a letter and said, hey, you got to watch out for those people. They're preaching this and this and that and the other. And, and the, and the guy wrote back and he said, you're too late. I've already been to the water. I've already been baptized. I've already been converted. And I feel, I feel all right. I've been saved in Jesus' name, right? That whole song. And so it's too late. I've already seen too much. You're, if you're going to try to tell me God doesn't heal, I apologize to you now very gently and kindly. I've seen too much. I've seen a lady's eye open in Mexico where I was ministering, and I've seen people that had cancer. God had totally uh, healed their bodies. I could go through stories and tell you. I've seen it happen over and over again. But God is going to raise up people. And when there, where there is a flow, where there is flaw and, and maybe some immaturity and need of development, God is going to fast track people. Because of humility and an openness from the church. When, when the church has an openness because of hunger, God's going to fast track some of these people that maybe they're still growing and maturing, but, but, but they're humble. And, because of, and, and if you'll stay open with love, that gift will begin to flow. God will help them. And, and, and they won't be lifted up with pride. We always want to talk about that. Well, they'll be lifted up with pride. And for every one person that is, there's going to be nine that won't. 
because they want and are hungry to see God move. And we got to stop. We got to stop putting God in a box because we have all of these things. Well, they're going to be lifted up with pride. And so what do we end up doing with that? We end up shutting it down and nothing happens. For fear that the one may be lifted up with pride so the nine never get to operate in it. And, we're, and I'm telling you, the world is literally thirsty and craving and hungry for the supernatural. And we who have the spirit are sitting there going, but we got the spirit. And God's going, we'll let it out. We'll let it move. We'll let it go. And we're going, yeah, but we got the spirit. And God's going, well, get it out. We'll let it go. Oh, but we don't want to get weird. And we don't. Let it out. Let it go. Let it. Well, we don't want to get lifted up in pride. Let it go. Move. We're, I'm telling you, we're stepping into a different era right now. We're stepping into a different time right now because there's such a thirst and hungry for the supernatural and a move of God where it's like, listen, we don't care. It's, it's all right. You'll work through it. Let, let that gift flow. Let, let's operate. Let's move. Lay hands. Lay hands. Well, that guy didn't go to Bible school for 16 years. He doesn't have his doctorate in such and such. He doesn't know Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic and such and such and such and such. But you know what? There's people here right now that have giftings from the Holy Ghost, and you need to start stepping out by faith and operating in it. And it's time for you to let God use you because we got to start seeing eyes open. We need to start seeing ears open. We need to start seeing the lame walk. You want to know one of the greatest ways to see a move of God and see hundreds filled with the Holy Ghost and come to church? is you see somebody that can't walk, walk. And somebody that's blind, see. And somebody that's dead, come back to life. And you say, what do you mean? We have it right here. There's enough people right here that believe in God and are hungry for the move of the Spirit. And God is waiting for that gift to just rise in you. Operate in it. Move in it. Step out by faith. And there's going to be many of you that's going to do this. Many. It's not just going to be the few. It's not just going to be the, oh, that bro- that's the brother that really operates in it. Nah, enough of that. Done. We don't got time for that nonsense. There is too many people to reach. This is coming down to the end, and we need all of you. Well, Simeon, I mean, I'm only 15 years old. Come on, David. Come on, David. That Saul spirit's got to go. That King Saul spirit's got to go. Well, he's been a warrior from his youth, and who do you think you are? And you're just a shepherd boy. That's a spirit of Saul. But in the name of Jesus, I speak to every young person that's in this place right now. If you have a hunger for God inside of you, it's time for you to get a stone and put it in that sling. And it's time for you to begin to swing that sling in prayer and believe God to do great things. And some of you older people with hair white like mine or no hair or a lot more white hair than mine. I'm reminded of a man named Caleb that came into the promised land. And he said, give me that mountain. He's about 85 years old. And this was no small feat. Go read about it. And the Bible said he took this mountain, this strong defense, and he conquered this place. doesn't matter your age. doesn't matter your age. Well, it's been a long time. What are you talking about? Lay hands on the sick. I'll tell you what I saw yesterday. Now, I know this deep and wide thing has been going on, but I saw this yesterday. I saw, I saw a pool right here. Now, okay, I'm going to get trippy on I told you I'm going to follow God, and you can get trippy. I practiced on pastor the other day. I don't know how weird he thought I was. 
Because it's like we like, simi- we, we like certain people until they start to do something we're not used to. <laughs> hey, Simeon, talk about discipleship and life studies. Don't do that other stuff. <laughs> so I saw a pool right here in the spirit, right here on the altar. And it was choppy, you know, like the ocean. And I started seeing people get out of their seats and in the aisle and, like, jump in. And it was deep. It was super deep in the spirit. So as I saw this, I was like, well, what am I seeing? I was walking yesterday. I, I, God talks to me when I do the crazy walking that I do. And then what I do is I get my little audio deal. And I, I promise you, I probably, I can press, here, I'll just show you. So you guys think I'm crazy. Just so you know that I'm not crazy. I promise you. See all these recordings right here? What was it? 3.04 p.m. yesterday. You have to see it. Because when you see it, that's when things can happen. That's when... Yeah, I'm sweating. That's when anything... I'm not making this up. I saw a pool where the waters were choppy and people were coming into the aisle, out of the aisles and jumping into the deep and getting saturated and immersed and submerged in the water. And when they were, they were getting drunk in the spirit. Now watch this. Listen. Before the gospel was preached, remember Peter, he gets on the day of Pentecost and he preaches, right? Before he ever did that, the manifestation of the supernatural came. They were discipled, right? They they had followed Jesus for three and a half years. They had followed, they were discipled, and they were in the upper room. And all of a sudden, now this is all before Acts 2 where he Stands up and preaches. <clears throat> Drunk on the Holy Ghost. They were already following. They, were f- they followed the word of the Lord to the upper room. Wasn't the word of the Lord, go and tarry in Jerusalem until you, until you be endued with power from on high. And they lingered there for 10 days and fasted and prayed, right? And they... What? What started happening? The supernatural. They prayed and fasted. Then the supernatural manifested. And then they were consumed by the Spirit. And then the gospel was preached. It didn't skip to the gospel being preached. It wasn't they were standing there and Jesus ascended and then they immediately went to the gospel being preached. What happened? They got into a place of, of, of prayer and a dimension of of the supernatural and in this place they they felt the spirit they they saw the spirit manifest like fire they heard the spirit like wind they were drunk on the holy ghost and then they preached and then everybody that heard them was baptized with the holy ghost but the church the believers had this incredible manifestation and dimension of the Spirit. That's what happened. That's why they had this powerful move of the Spirit. And that's, some people believe that's why there was 3,000 there, because they heard the wind too. I'll never forget Billy Cole telling this story. I don't know if you know who Billy Cole is, but Brother Billy Cole was an incredible man of God. And he was in Thailand, and he was praying for these ministers who had never experienced the Holy Ghost. They were pastors. And they were sitting down on this, like, hewn-out log, and he was praying with them, and the Spirit came, and they started being filled with the Spirit, and they were speaking in tongues. And all of a sudden, this little kid ran, ran opened the door of the back of the church and said, Hey, guys, there's a plane somewhere. A plane crashed. Well, everybody in the city there started running trying to find this plane that apparently crashed. There was no plane. They all heard it. wonder what that was. Well, isn't it interesting that they all heard a plane? <laughs> fly over their little village or town or whatever. Interestingly enough, at the same time that all these pastors were getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Sound of a rushing, mighty wind. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... I'm, I'm believing that this deep and wide thing you're talking about, I saw it. I, I, I saw it. And, and what God is wanting to do is that every one of us here is going to step into a dimension of the Holy Ghost because he wants to do even greater things in reaching people in the Spirit. 
the move of the Spirit, the flow of the Spirit. And so let me just say this one more thing. We don't need to be afraid to move with God. And you have seen God fill a lot of people with the Holy Ghost recently. That's what I heard, right? Like 30-something people got the Holy Ghost. And there's a lot of baptisms. And from what I know, you guys see baptisms all the time. Okay? And, and that's, man, that's what, as the church, we should be doing. The Bible says, the Lord added daily to the church such as we're being saved. That's something the church should be doing. Right? And, th and, and, and this church is experiencing that. And that's a part of growth and revival. And I believe what God is doing, because there's greater revival coming. Let me just tell you this. I know you know it, because God, and, and, and he's going to confirm it. I'm going to go back home, and you're going to see even greater things happen um, through, through teaching and Bible studies and services and praying. And there's people right now that you've been praying for, uh, family members and friends. They're coming. Trust me. They're coming. You're going to see them. You're going to see them baptized. You're going to see them filled with the Holy Ghost. If you thought 37 people getting the Holy Ghost was a lot, that's just the beginning. And I'm not saying this to hype you up. I'm, I'm honestly telling you this, that you've just tapped the surface of that. But I'm also encouraging you that the, the first century church was a church that operated in all of these things. And we need, we need not to be afraid to walk in all of these things. Right? I remember Brother Barnes, and I, I, I shared this with Pastor. Brother Barnes said that... <clears throat> Uh, when we're trying to do something without the moving of the Spirit, it's like trying to cut down a tree with a butter knife versus a chainsaw. We need the, we need the word of knowledge. Everybody say word of knowledge. That's what he did to that woman when he talked to her about her husband. Jesus did that. That unlocked a whole city. And, and, and there was, uh, the whole city was converted. They believed. I mean, one, one word of knowledge, word of wisdom, Everybody say word of wisdom. Okay? That's, that's divinely giving uh, someone the uh, understanding on how to, to use the knowledge that they have. And then we have <clears throat> gift of prophecy where, where God is using a person to tell things, tell those, those things that are to come. And, and, and then we have the gift of faith. The gift of faith is so powerful. It's, it's a faith that comes from, from God. It's a faith that when we're in this place right now where, you know, all of you guys have, I mean, all of you guys have so many things going on in your life, come from all different walks of life. You guys are going through all different kinds of things right now. You're facing all different kinds of challenges. And you come in here all together, and some of you are tired, some of you are you're hungry, some of you, whatever it is, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay, how much longer? But then you feel a surge of the Spirit, where all of a sudden it's like, and you want to pray, and you feel excited, and, and, and it's like a supercharge of, like, like uh, energy. That's faith. That's a gift of faith. God's, God's releasing faith. It's His faith it charged into you, right? And then, and then we, have, we, have, uh, uh, we have gift of uh, tongues, which I think we heard that here. And then there's uh, there's diverse tongues and there's interpretation of tongues. I didn't say I didn't mean gift of tongues. I meant diverse tongues, interpretation of tongues, and then we have working of miracles. Now that's when it's instantaneous. That means if someone if someone can't see, they see, and then we have gifts of healing. Notice it doesn't say gift of healing singular. It says gifts plural. So that's why someone prays for people with cancer. Excuse me, real quick. Praise for someone with cancer, and bam, every time they pray with someone with cancer, cancer goes. Pray with someone with a head cold, can't, some, some reason the head cold doesn't go away. Somebody else comes over with a head cold, psh, head cold goes away. They have a gift for head colds. There's gifts of healing, right? God wants his church to be complete, right? And he wants us to step in that. And I'm seeing, as I've been here, since I've been here, he, this is what I believe God's going to do. He's going to combine the evangelism, discipleship, component that you guys have worked so hard to develop and and pray and 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 teach and do all that and he's going to start to merge this greater level of the gifts of the spirit and prayer and fasting and all of this and and he's going to put it all together amen amen 
Because when that happens, why not have all of it? Isn't that, isn't that for us? That's for us today, right? That's for us today. Amen. Because I'm telling you, when we begin to see miracles happen, this creates a greater platform for the gospel to be preached. This isn't about somebody going, oh, do you know that brother over there? <laughs> he really operates in the spirit. <laughs> he can really heal people. No. It's about an opportunity and a platform for the gospel to be preached and for growth to happen. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that God still heals today? Amen. Musicians, would you play a little bit? Hallelujah. How many of you believe that God still can heal cancer and remove that from people's bodies today? In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's been great revivals throughout the years of, of healings and miracles and things, right? And, and, and we don't need to clam up when it comes to believing for that. We need to be open, ready. 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 That person that's been shut down, they don't want to talk to you about God. Trust me, if they're sick or something or their mom is in the hospital and you walk in there and say in Jesus' name and their mom gets out of the hospital bed, trust me, they'll want to hear about Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. The, the enemy doesn't want me to preach this today. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to preach it anyway. Because he does not want us to wake up and know who we are. We are the people of God. We were called to walk in the spirit. We were called to believe for the supernatural. Didn't Jesus heal? Didn't Jesus raise the dead? Didn't he say greater works than these shall you do? We are not meant to just be a cerebral church where I pass to you ideas. Oh, that's a really good thought. Wow, that was really intellectual. Well, goodness, maybe we can share commentary sometime. And we can talk about the Aramaic. And was that word really used in that context? Was that verse added in the third century by Constantine? Or was that actually in the original? Hey, listen, I got no problem. You want to talk textual criticism? Let's do that all day long. You want to talk about it, about evidence for the existence of God, whether it's uh, the astronomical evidence? You want to talk about e equals mc squared and Einstein's theory of relativity? Let's do it all day long. But at some point, when you're broken, when your heart is aching, when your body's in pain, and when you're suffering, E equals MC squared is not going to take that cancer out of your body. But it will take faith and power that only comes in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody let it go. Come on, somebody let it go. Come on, somebody let it go. Come on, somebody let your voice out. He's here. He's here. has got to go. Sickness has got to go. Chanela, you got to get out of that bed in Jesus' name. You are 18 years old. You don't belong in that bed in Jesus' name. You are powerful. Come on, look at your brother and sister. Tell them you're powerful. Come on, do it. Do it. I want you to, a little longer, look at him in the eye. Come on. Let it go. Come on, this air. You feel it? You feel the, you feel the spirit of Jesus? Come on, let your, let your voice out. Come on, start letting that faith go. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. The powerful one is here. The one that has the power is here. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Close your eyes. 
Come on, let your voice out. He's not dead. He's alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him all over me. doing be not weary in well doing for in due season you will reap if you faint not that's what Jesus said hallelujah Woo. he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you always, even until the end of the age. That's what he said. That's what he said. Hallelujah. If you are suffering in your body, I'd like you to just kind of make your way over here. If you're suffering in pain in your body, you keep playing. Come on. We're not just doing it to do it. We're doing it because we're believing that as you're walking over here, God is going to begin to do it. Come on, fill in this whole area. Over here to my right. Jesus. Hallelujah. For every person that came here today needing a word from the Lord, here's your word. The enemy's tried to kill you. The enemy's tried to wipe you out. The enemy's tried to destroy you. But the enemy cannot kill a God dream. The enemy cannot kill what God has started in you. Because he'd have to be able to kill God. And since no one can kill God, your dream, God's dream, God's plan, and what God wants to do in your life is still alive. It's breathing right now. It's breathing. Can you feel it? If you can feel it, raise your hand. Come on. Raise your hand. Your brethren have tried to kill it. The devil's tried to kill it. And maybe even you tried to kill it. But it's not dead. It's breathing right now. I can feel it. It's in your chest. It's in your heart. Hallelujah. Now. Pastor, 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 and all the ministry team that prays with people. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to make your way through here and begin to, if you want to ask what they need prayer for, go ahead and do that. But I want you to begin to minister to these people over here to my right and some are here in the middle and begin to believe that when you lay hands. Now, hold on. Before we do, just get in front of them. Come on. Find somebody to get in front of. And we're going we're gonna to pray a prayer first and then you're going to lay hands. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Now there's there's some of you that are out here that uh, God wants to use you today. You're not down here, but you got healing in your hands. That just probably shocks some of you right now. You're like, what, me? Yeah, you. And it's time for you to begin to practice. And it's time for you to begin to get, let God use you. So when I pray this prayer, and before we start to pray, I'm going to pray a prayer. They're going to start to pray. I want you to come in and start helping pray. Just say, real simple, in Jesus' name. Let that gift begin to flow. You're like, man, I'm new. I haven't really done. But how many of you out there right now, and you don't need to raise your hand, but how many of you feel something inside of you? I want to help. I want, to, I want to help. I want to pray. I feel like God wants to do something through me. Yeah, I know. I can see it. I can feel it. And you know what? The, the, the more you keep shutting down that thing that God wants to do through you, the more you're just going to kind of stand there and exist. You're meant for so much more. And 
And when you start to feel the fire of God move through you, you're going to start to sense purpose. And when you start to sense purpose, you're going to your whole life is going to begin to change. And some of the reason why you're battling and struggling in life is because you don't sense purpose. You don't, what am I doing? What am I doing? And when you're that way, this is why people struggle. But when you start to feel God flow through you and see God use you and God begin to do something in your life and you sense purpose, everything begins to change. Amen? Let's stand in front of these people. Are we ready? Here it comes. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna jump into this river right here. We're going to jump into this move of the Spirit right here. Lord, Lord, you gave the word. You showed it to me. Now we're going we're gonna to step out by faith right now. Lord, and hallelujah, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we step out by faith and in Jesus' name. Go ahead, lay hands. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Bodies, be made whole in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease, leave these bodies in the name of Jesus. Pain, pain, leave these bodies in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every disease. I take authority over every disease in Jesus' name. I take authority over every disease in Jesus' name. I pray the gifts of healing be in operation. I pray the working of miracles in operation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we believe that we're going to see reports of cancer removed from bodies diabetes remove blood lord issues with the blood totally totally removed god and made whole in jesus name come on that's it and maybe some of you are out there turn to somebody and pray with them maybe you're not at the front that's all right Turn to somebody and pray with them. Come on. Don't be afraid. Lay hands on somebody next to you if you're still out there. Believe God to use you. Come on. We declare healing today. We declare miracles today. We declare it in Jesus' name. We step out in faith, God, in the name of Jesus. No more pain. No more suffering. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.